For today's reading lesson, you are going to need your writing paper because I'm going to read you a fun Thanksgiving story. And then after that, we're going to write what we're thankful for. Our story today is called A Turkey for Thanksgiving by Eve Bunting. It was Thanksgiving morning. Mr. Moose helped Mrs. Moose set the Thanksgiving table. Sheep will sit here. He likes the chair that's straight up and down, Mr. Moose said. Rabbit here, porcupine here, Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Goat here. He smiled at his wife. Isn't it nice to have friends to share Thanksgiving? Mrs. Moose set two paper pilgrims, one at each end of the table. She placed the paper turkey with its great fan of, t of a tail between the candles and stood back. They look good, my dear, Mr. Moose said. Mrs. Moose sighed. Yes, but I wish we had a real turkey. Everyone always has a turkey for Thanksgiving. Everyone but us. Mr. Moose nuzzled Mrs. Moose's head. Well, that won't do. I will go this minute and find you a turkey for Thanksgiving. Mr. Moose put on his cap and went out. Mist wandered through the bare trees. The cold made his nose water. Rabbit poked his head from inside his, from his rabbit hole. Mr. Moose, is it dinner time? Not quite yet. Mrs. Moose wants a turkey. I'm off to find one. Rabbit joined him in three quick hops. I'll come too. Hmm. So they're off to go get a turkey because we know that when people celebrate Thanksgiving, a lot of times they'll eat yummy Thanksgiving food like turkey and stuffing and mashed potatoes. Moose's warm breath hung white in front of him. Snow crunched under his hooves and made little holes that Rabbit jumped over. I see the goats, Rabbit said. Mr. Goat raised his head and spat onto the tin he, that he can he was chewing. Is it dinner time? He called. Not till I find a turkey, Mr. Moose said. We saw one down by the river, Mrs. Goat told him, and Mr. Goat added, a fat one. Hmm. I wonder if they're going to find a, uh, a turkey. You can make a prediction. Do you think they're going to find a turkey? The goat leaped down from their perch. The goats leaped down from their perch. We'll show you. Sheep was farther up the hillside looking round as a fur ball in his winter coat. Is it dinner time? He bellowed. First, I have to find a turkey, Mr. Moose bellowed back. There's a turkey nest on the river bank, Sheep called. Wait for me. Hmm. They're all going to go look for the turkey now. The earth smelled of ice and moss as they crunched along. Above them, a crow hung, black as a puff of wood, wood smoke. Porcupine was hiding in the underbrush. It's you, he said, and he put his quills down. We're off to get a turkey for Mrs. Moose, Mr. Moose explained. Do you want to come? I'm slow, Porcupine said. Pick me up on your way back. Who'd want to pick you up? Sheep asked and laughed his leet of a laugh. I'll wait, Porcupine told Mr. Moose. <gasps> Looks like they found one. They saw Turkey's nest right away, and Turkey himself peered, himself peering over the top of it. Turkey, Turkey, Mr. Moose called out in his sweetest voice. Arg! Turkey blundered from his nest and ran. Mr. Moose lumbered after him. Turkey, don't run. We just want to have you for Thanksgiving dinner. Turkey ran faster. 
turkey's sign says, do not disturb, come back after Thanksgiving. No turkey here. He doesn't want people to gobble him up and eat him for Thanksgiving. Mr. Moose saw the red and blue sheen of Turkey's neck. Turkey's tail brushed crumbs of snow behind him as he tried to fly off. Too fat, Mr. Goat said. Turkey's legs bent in the middle as he fell. Mr. Moose put a, put a booted hoof on his head and smiled his great toothy smile. I hope you don't have other plans for Thanksgiving, Turkey. He helped Turkey up. My wife won't mind that you're too fat, he said. Let's go. It's getting close to dinner time. They marched Turkey in front. Sorry about this, for I can see you don't want to come, Mr. Moose said. But I insist a promise is a promise. Hmm, why do you think the turkey is scared? Maybe he thinks they might try to eat him. There was a wreath of dried fruit on Moose's door. Inside the house was filled with Thanksgiving smells. Mr. Moose hid turkey behind him. Look who I brought, Mrs. Moose, he said. Sheep, the goats, rabbit, and porcupine. And ta-da, he pushed turkey around in front of him. For you, a turkey for Thanksgiving. He doesn't look like he's too happy to be there. He looks a little bit nervous and scared, huh? Mrs. Moose clapped her hooves. I'm so happy to have you, Turkey. Thank you, Mr. Moose. Now everything's perfect. Shall we sit? Sheep asked. Shall we sit? Sheep asked, head heading for the straight up and down chair. Let's, Mrs. Moose pointed. Rabbit here, and porcupine here, and Mr. and Mrs. Goat here, and look, I brought a chair from the other room in hopes of turkey. Uh, a chair? Turkey stammered. Right next to me, Mrs. Moose said. Light the candles, Mr. Moose. Let's see what, find, what happens on the next page. There were bowls of acorn and alfalfa sprouts dried since summer. There was, there was willow bark and cured grasses and wild parsley. There were pressed leaves, thin and pale as new ice on a pond. I hope you find something here to your liking, Mr. Turkey, Mrs. Moose said. I wasn't sure of your taste. You are so kind to worry about my taste, Turkey said. I thought you'd be worrying about how I taste. Heavens no, Mr. Moose smiled his big tooth smile and filled everyone's cup with cold spring water. It's so nice to have friends around the table at Thanksgiving. Turkey's waddles, waddles wobbled. It's even nicer to be at your table and not on it, he said. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. So look, that's so sweet. They invited Turkey to sit at their table. That whole time, they didn't even want to eat him. They just wanted to invite him to share the meal with everyone. Happy Thanksgiving, Turkey. I like that story a lot. So I think what we should do now that we read that story is we should write something that we're thankful for. Because during this season of time, we usually like to express gratitude and express what we're thankful for. There's always something to be thankful for. So at the top right here, why don't you practice writing your first and your last name if you can as a little challenge. Then you can draw something that you're thankful for and we'll practice writing about it. I know what I'm gonna draw. You'll have to guess as I'm drawing if you can think of it. 
I'm gonna draw me. This is that's Mrs. Ferris, and I'm gonna draw my laptop right here on this table. And I am going to draw all the little squares on our Microsoft Teams meetings. 16 squares for all 16 of my students that I love. And not a perfect drawing, but I'm trying my best, aren't I? I am thankful for my kindergarten class because you guys make me smile and you make me really happy and I love hearing what everyone has to say and I love hearing all of your ideas and it really brightens my day when we get to spend time together. I'm going to write, I am thankful for my kindergarten class. So that is seven words. I, then I'm gonna do my finger space, am, that's a beginning sight word, and easy to, easy to sound out. I am thankful. You might need to copy this word from my page because it's a little bit more of a complex word to know how to spell. I am thankful, and then I'm always doing my finger spaces and checking to make sure I have my five star writing for my, my lowercase letters always start below the dotted line, kindergarten, and we capitalize kindergarten because it is a formal name. Big word, if you need to copy that word, if you're gonna use kindergarten, what you're thankful for, class. Maybe you're thankful for your kindergarten class too. Of course, you don't have to copy mine. You can write about how you're thankful for your family or you're thankful, thankful for your health or thankful for your toys. So I want you to think of at least one thing you're thankful for and if you can think of more than that, then that would be really awesome too.